don't don't be negative about another person's dreams. Let people dream. Bruno Steiner, his skills from series of uh, photographs from a place called Harlemville. And Harlemville is an estate in front of the Bruno Steiner Principle. And he talks about allowing children to grow and to dream. He talks about the fairy tale stage. And these kids have been told to just go out and investigate and uh, laugh yourself on all the grocery bills, essentially. <laughs> so it's about how we do the dream. How often do we live in a society which closes people down? We've also talked about friends who came out a number of times. Connection and interpersonal working is really important. We've got different sites like in the more professional one, Facebook is just an example of one of the ones that's used, which is Twitter, etc. etc. The rule there, the key thing is, why are they so important? They're important because we want to be a connection. This is a diagram sometimes I use of uh, patients, some of the men that we work with, about where do people fall in terms of this diagram. Moving from the outside into the little side of the person, a map of interesting intimacy. Intimacy is important. You'll see in the next slide that one of the biggest features for people, young people who suffer from depression, is loneliness. And Max Ricardo said, loneliness is not the absence of faces, it is the absence of intimacy. We can think about here the example that I gave was Jesus and the disciples. He had a relationship with 12 men. Within the 12, he had the three who he shared more intimate times with. And within the three, he had John, the disciple who Jesus loved. And he had a very intimate relationship with. We need people in our lives who lose different levels of intimacy because many of the people who come through my doors as psychiatrists don't have those intimate connections. We need to encourage the formation of those. Loneliness, 79% of young people suffering with depression are related to one of the top three reasons stress and family problems are related to the next two. The relationship between the mentors in your life and yourself, like this calibre is not. Really very complex. And intimacy can be written on this way. Do me see. Letting people in. <coughs> and as youth workers, we've got to work in situations where we do create safety, where we create also the ability to be vulnerable, where we don't put ourselves up as perfect people, because that's when people really grow. We've got the help to learn how to be. With relationships, M. Scott Peck said that most people that he saw in therapy had what he called drawbridge problems. Some of them, the drawbridge was up, nobody got in. Some people, the drawbridge was down, everybody and their granny dragged them, wandered around their life and told them what to do. Drawbridge problems. We've got to help people to see how to be in relationship. That should be mentored and it should be modeled. And one of the ways that, that that's done is through creating safe containers where people can do the work that they need to do, that they can be intimate in a healthy way with one another, that they can get the hope that you guys do. I talked about a mission statement before. Mission statement is made up of two things. It's made up of a vision and an action. This is an example of a mentoring mission statement that was drawn by a group of mentors uh, that I work with in Scotland. Our mission is to create an environment where every person is treated with value. We do this by valuing ourselves and others and by choosing mindfully to share our wisdom and experience. Pretty good, isn't it? The two parts, it's a big picture stuff, so create an environment where every person is treated with value. That's huge. Their action is valuing themselves and others and mindfully sharing their wisdom and experience. But it's still a big picture. So if you remember the donut diagram before, right at the center of things is the value, core values, and integrity with those values, you have goals, and the goals should get you to the establishment and achievement of that mission. And if you achieve that mission, you will leave behind your legacy that you'll be proud of. Doug Howard Holt said this, never for the sake of peace and quiet to deny your own experience or convictions. This is really important. For people to learn this, that they are good and acceptable just as they are. In fact, it is essential for them to be authentic. It is essential for them to live their life with integrity, and if they do, they'll change lives. And that's what you do. 
much of what you do is so on um, it's so unrecognised in many senses. I, I was involved in crusaders for uh, over fourteen years, and I can think of uh, the men in that youth organisation who spoke into my life, and I can think of the men who I've had the honour of speaking into their lives now, and that that continues. You guys have similar stories. You've heard some of those stories today. Mental health is essential. Roy Hill's a psychiatrist um, has a program that the cat's name that is there's no health without mental health. It's got to be a part of what you do. But mental health isn't stuff that just psychiatrists or psychologists or counsellors do. It's something that each one of you are involved in. The greatest and the strongest coral with suicide, with completed suicide, is hopelessness. And I come back to Napoleon's quote, you're the beginner in the goal. Just think of the lives that you could change and the lives that you could save in regards to that. Helping young people to be attentive, to be connected with one another, to be connected with you is really important. A young man that I work with in Mojo, he's not so young now, that's why he's very young, of course. But uh, his name is Paul Blackburn. Paul, at the age of about 14, confessed to murdering another boy, a crime which he did not commit. He confessed it because he was vulnerable, because he wanted attention, because he had nobody in his life where he could um, uh, be intimate with, and because he had nobody who would stand up and be a voice for him. He spent 28 years in prison for a crime that he did not commit. As a consequence of that, the work that you do prevents that sort of thing happening. People will not have, there's no such thing as a psychiatrist, I don't believe, a normal anymore. There is no such thing as a normal life. You have the opportunity to live <coughs> there with the abnormality, to be with people and to give hope. And that's the most important thing in terms of mental health. If you have the opportunity, don't be afraid to ask the questions. Are you suicidal? Is your life crap at the minute? Because the reality is, most of the people who come to my clinics, whenever I was a general adult consultant, most of the people who came to my clinics, I told them that they weren't sick. I told them to stop taking the medication. Freud said, I'll put forward this account. Freud said, sometimes the best that we can hope to achieve with a plan is normal human misery. <laughs> it's a bit sort of negative, but I don't tend to plan. But essentially, for a lot of people, life is just pretty terrible. But it's less terrible if you have somebody to walk alongside with. Most people don't have that intimacy with Christ model in terms of the 12, the 3, and the 1. If you can bring that intimacy into somebody else's life, if you can be that John, if you can be that Peter, if you can be one of the 12, then do it. And if you do it for them, then hopefully somebody else will do it for you. My last piece of advice to you all is probably summed up by this. <laughs> so <I'm> careful. <laughs> Life is always full of slips. Try and slip carefully. Um, I want to just put this up as well, and I'll leave this up. The Big House is another organisation I work with, and the Big House seeks to work with eating disorders and such like working with young people, helping them to work in sort of peer ways and stuff. They're on a couple of journeys coming up. Um, both, well, for instance, our past acts involved eating disorders. I think the psychiatrist who's doing that is a guy called Ken Gillian. Ken um, a heads up the eating disorders service in the north, uh, and it's not the reaction to see there. And the, uh, the next one is young people in self harm. So a lot of people like to compare them to something that we know. Um, but you're more than welcome to come to that. Uh, if you want to grab me after, it'll be around until lunchtime. And somebody who has a, a balloon and then join your table for the next discussion. Okay, feel the fear. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, and uh, I hope you're blessed the rest of your day.